My favorite Romulan ship design ever, probably, is the Bird of Prey from the 23rd century, as seen in multiple episodes of the original series, the most well-known of which is likely Balance of Terror. It's an iconic and important part of Romulan identity in the wide world of Trek, establishing in her use during her debut episodes the key traits of the Romulans as a species moving forward. The vessel's appearance in Balance of Terror one of the episodes I frequently go back to in a rotation of what I consider to be the best Star Trek episodes, uh, it got me thinking about how the ship is presented in the context of that episode, uh, and actually how its traits would impact Trek moving forward, but we're mostly focusing on the Bird of Prey. And as I'm a massive nerd of all things nautical, uh, in addition to being a nerd when it comes to spaceships, basically if it floats on water or in zero-g, I, I love it. I couldn't help but draw parallels between the original Bird of Prey, with its cloaking device and powerful plasma weapon, and the qualities possessed by submarines in the real world. Let's go over what that means, because it may seem kind of out there initially, uh, but will make some sense, I promise, hopefully by the end of the video, but you'll have to watch the entire thing to for it to all click. Sure, this isn't just a blatant attempt to boost, uh, boost watch length. Why, well, um, why are you asking? Alright, so what do I mean about the Bird of Prey being the submarine of the Star Trek universe? The Bird of Prey is a hyper-stealthy, futuristic spaceship which can hide itself by bending light and other radiation around the ship in a way that makes her functionally invisible to outside ships, with some downsides to the ship's performance. A submarine, by contrast, uses the magical properties of water to hide itself beneath the surface so she can prey on surface vessels above her, which hopefully do not detect the sub's presence, because if they do, it's bad things. Uh, so I, I hope there the parallels are fairly obvious. Like a submarine and the bird of prey have the ability to sneak up upon victims undetected before launching a devastating strike to quickly deal with her cho chosen targets, and like a submarine, the cloaking device used by the Bird of Prey does limit her somewhat performance-wise in exchange for her stealth. And like a submarine, once the Bird of Prey is detected, she's a fairly easy target, ill-suited to conventional combat. I, I hope the parallels are obvious between the two. I would also argue further that the cloaking device gimmick of the Romulans was a deliberate decision by the writers of the original series, but I can't as I have not found any sources or interviews with the writers, actors, quotes by them, or official printed sources stating such. But I can theorycraft a little bit. I believe that in conceptualizing the bird of prey and deciding to use the cloaking mechanic, that the writers of the original series were actually putting the submarine into Star Trek contrasting with Enterprise's surface ship shtick. All of the show's writers and major actors, as far as I'm aware of, were alive during the Second World War, where they were alarmingly young. Some, in fact, would serve in the armed forces during the conflict, various armed forces of various countries. But even if they were not alive during the conflict, the Second World War cast a long shadow over the era in which the original series was made with its iconography, politics, and outcomes shaping the world in which the original series existed in many ways. Uh, perhaps the most iconic aspect of the Second World War, we're not going to get into the whole, like, um, uh, Soviet Union as Klingons XP or Romulans as a People's Republic of China XP, but that's also a thing that happened. I don't know who the British would be in Star Trek if we carry this forward. Maybe the Vulcans as, like, the... Uh, Hey, we're kind of here to check up on you and hopefully make sure you don't get too crazy. Ah, oh, there they go. Maybe the British or the Vulcans of the real... I don't know. The British do some surprisingly Florida man-ish things. Anyway, potentially the most iconic aspect of the Second World War, one of the most definitely, was the Battle of the Atlantic. Uh, this would pit the... The submarines of the German U-boat fleet against the merchant and war fleets of the British Empire, United States, and other minor powers, as well as the British Commonwealth. Because if I just say British Empire, people from Canada and um, the land down under would be mad. 
Some Italian submarines would get involved. Actually, the Italian submarines did a lot of weird things. You should look that up. But the battle was mostly a fight between the Germans and others. And it was a desperate one, too. It was on the United Kingdom's side in an attempt to keep themselves supplied with food and war material, and on the German side a more desperate struggle to starve the British out of the war because of imbalance of force. Post-war, the submarine would see a new status as a lethal killing machine, capable of thinking any sinking anything. Uh, with post-war modifications and improvements leading to ever-increased capabilities for these vessels. With Enterprise taking some inspiration herself from submarines of the day in her design. And I say inspiration, but it's fairly loose. With all that context, I think it would be safe to assume a level of influence snuck its way from the submarine to the Romulan Bird of Prey, and from there the Romulan Psyche itself. Uh, which we would see develop further in the next generation in other shows. Though again, I have no official sources to confirm this. And the Romulan traits I'm speaking about, uh, sort of extending from the submarine concept, are things like sneaky, uh, use of subterfuge, and just generally not directly fighting, but also being, let's say, smart about it. So, what do you think of my seeing parallels between the Bird of Prey and submarine? I know that I'm not the first one to think of it, but I hope I was able to explain the parallels fairly well here and, you know, why I think it. If I didn't, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also, uh, thank you to the Patreons who not necessarily make these videos possible because I like doing them, but they, you know, help out. Uh, Patreons get access to videos early, they get to vote on what topics the channel will cover as well as a little perk uh so you can join in a link below also if you click that link down below you can get access to all of the artwork that i use on the video all the artwork that i make for the videos so like thumbnails and things like that if it's very obviously made by one guy who's figuring it out i probably made it and it's probably on patreon if it's something you want uh aside from that um is there anything else to talk about? I don't know. Mm. This video is going to be a little bit shorter than the last few. It's not 20 minutes long because those can be a little bit too much sometimes. So this should be a shorter video, hopefully, though. Hopefully I can also get video length down moving forward somewhat, hopefully. But also YouTube seems to like longer videos. So let me know if you want to see longer videos on this channel or if you like shorter ones. And literally, I think that's all I have to talk about. Thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, Patreon below, I guess. Uh, if you didn't like it, why are you watching to the end of this video? I mean, 